Hello. Hi, Emily. Hi, Emily. How are you doing today? I'm doing okay, ma'am. Okay. Oh. Ah, that's okay. It happens. I'm telling you, it feels like a Monday, but everybody's happy, so it's a happy Monday. Mm -hmm. So here you go. Thank you. Okay. All right. Court is going to call uh, 2020 CR 8599, State of Texas versus Victoria Hernandez. Can I have parties announced for the record? Thank you. For the state. Defense. I'm Michael DeLeon for Ms. Hernandez. And are you Ms. Hernandez? Yes, ma'am. Did you review the document entitled uh, Motion to Enter Adjudication of Guilt and Revoke Community Supervision with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, Your Honor. And counsel, I know you were recently appointed to represent Ms. Hernandez. Are you waiving your time? We are waiving uh, any type of preparation period, Your Honor. I believe we have come to a resolution Oh, that'll be acceptable to the court. All right. Yeah. And do you have any objection to proceeding, Ms. Hernandez? No, Your Honor. All right. Are you the same Victoria Irene Hernandez who was placed on deferred adjudication in 2020 CR 8599 for the offense of abandoning the child with intent to return on January 4th, 2021 for a period of three years? Is that you? Yes, ma'am. All right. State? Yes, Your Honor. Violated condition number 13. On or about the 23rd day of April 2024, in Bear County, Texas, defendant Victoria Irene Hernandez did then and there operate a motor vehicle without a valid Texas driver's license in violation of condition number 13. How do you plead to that, true or not true? True. Uh, waiver of any violated condition. Any objection? No objection, Your Honor. Did you understand by pleading true to violation of condition number 13, the court could find it true, grant the motion? Find you guilty and sentence you up to two years in the state jail facility and up to a ten thousand dollar fine. Did you understand that? Yes, Your Honor. Knowing that, do you still wish to plead true to violation of condition thirteen? I do. Court will find violation of condition number thirteen true. Is there a proposed agreement? No, there's not. All right, uh, state. What are you requesting? State's requesting. Sir. Defense, what are you requesting? Your Honor, a probation had made a recommendation to extend for one year placement as Hernandez in a DDRF, followed by a mixed supervision and a parenting class. And uh, as the court could see, she was in felony drug court. Um, DDRF was held in abeyance last time as an option. And um, she is motivated to go to DDRF, be successful in it. Apparently the wait is only three to six weeks. And um, that's what we're asking the court to do. All right. Any objection to the court reviewing the court summary? No objection, Your Honor. All right. Uh, Ms. Hernandez, I don't think you're a good candidate for probation. And let me just tell you why. Felony drug court is an intensive form of probation. I know that. But from reviewing the court summary, it's not as though felony drug court, you mess up one time or you make a bad choice one time that they say, oh, we're not going to deal with you anymore. And I'm looking here at the sanctions that they gave you over there. And let me just tell you how many sanctions they gave you, which means this is how many chances they gave you. You understand? So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five. 36. That's what you're coming to this court with. 36 times felony drug court was seeking to work with you. So you see where my mindset is? And do you understand. and do you understand why? Yes, Your Honor. And so I placed you on probation here. And even here, you had a motion to revoke filed against you. And that was on... Well, it was heard on March 9, 2022, and that's when you were sent to felony drug court. So I don't think you're a good candidate for probation. Judge, if I could. Yes. One thing for Ms. Hernandez, the good thing about felony drug court for her was that um, 
it is our belief that it has worked. She has been clean since September, and if she was tested today, she's going to come up negative. Mm -hmm. So, you know, um, it's not like she totally... Yeah, there's several things that she did do correctly in felony drug court. Um, there are a number of things, obviously, as the court has seen, uh, that weren't done correctly, but she made a lot of her appointments, and um, she has ended up clean, which is the point of felony drug court. I just don't think you're a good candidate. I mean, felony drug court, that's a very good program. And what felony drug court has placed, you know, the issues they have with you. I mean, they're major issues, but instead they are still trying to work with you. And they tried to work with you a lot. Here's the thing. I know a lot of people want to stay on probation. They do. Like nobody wants to go to prison. I don't take any joy in sending the people to prison. And everybody that I send to prison or everybody I place on probation, I actually do remember them. Even as a defense attorney, I had some clients who ended up in prison. Guess what? I still remember them and wondering how they're doing. And, and, and hopefully they've changed their life. And it'll be the same with you. I just don't think you're a good candidate for probation. I think we tried. And so, and judge, the only other thing is she's never been given a felony conviction before. That's why she wants to stay on defer. She's motivated for it. And that's why she was hoping that the uh, probation's recommendation would be followed. All right. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to find 13 true. I'm going to revoke, find you guilty, and I'll sentence you under 1244. Does anybody want to state any objection to her being sentenced under 1244? 1244 allows a court to reduce the punishment for a state jail felony to a misdemeanor. This can only happen with an agreement between the defense attorney and the state. 1244A usually results in the defendant serving time in county jail for the state jail felony, but they will still be convicted of a felony. The court must determine that this punishment would be best for justice, taking into account factors such as the circumstances and severity of the felony, the defendant's history, character, and rehabilitation needs. 1244B converts a state felony into a Class A misdemeanor, which usually results in a time-served sentence. It also allows for probation and deferred adjudication. All right, I'll sentence you under 1244. Let's talk about the time. Yeah, how much time does she have? Mm -hmm. How about the past few years? Yes. So, I was going back and forth with the drug court personnel in this case. And there is some concern um, if she is given a sentence JSAT. Oh, it's not going to be JSAT. And, and what was the concern, though? Now now you've piqued everyone's interest. Judge, um, they feel that a JSAT sentence is not... The reason why she was kicked out of drug court and so forth, they just don't think JSAT would be appropriate. Um, and some other concerns in regards to her child. Ah. So if she was given JSAT, they just have concerns in regards to that. Now, if she was continued, then that would be something different, but they are not in agreement with anything JSAT. All right, so what is the issue with the child? From my understanding, there is a CPS open case um, for neglect and possible abuse. Not on you, it's on the father. Okay. There's an open case. And state, you're asking for revocation? Correct, you are. So we are not opposed to revocation, but we are not with JSAC. Okay. Judge, I, I mean, what, what I can tell you, I wasn't going to give her judgment satisfied. I just, um, let me just tell you what my thought processes were. Yes, my sir. thought process in reading everything was I, I saw that there's a child involved, right? This case involves a child and it's um, abandoned with intent to return. So I understand. And I understand that that, child's, that child, they're telling the report is special needs. Yes. But she's making horrible choices. At the same time, Judge, if she goes to DDRF, 
It doesn't kick the can down the road. It puts her in a position where she, her, potentially she'll be a better citizen, better productive parent. So DDRF only lasts for long, probation only lasts for long. If we help her continue, she has a possibility of, you know, one more chance. And the court has given plenty of chances before, but if she's given one more chance, there's a possibility that one day she's going to be uh, still with this child and she needs to be, that child needs a, a stable parent and DDRF will help in that potentially. Uh, state? Is the state still recommending revocation? Well, Judge, when we were uh, trial was involved, I mean, the state would be opposed to DDRF, follow up, and um, the confusion will be hopefully because it looks like the person from notes that we have in our system that the defendant might have any of that problems and any type of additional help might help for the future of that trial at least. Well, I will tell you what, your special needs child has saved you and you are not saving your special needs child. So where is the child now? He is with his father at the moment. The CPS Kate like is um, on the father and the, the current girlfriend. And um... so let me get this straight and correct me if I'm wrong. So you are saying that there's allegations of abuse and those allegations are abuse against the father who he's with? Yes, Your, your Honor. And the, the case has been open for about, uh, they, so they opened one CPS case, my court did because of the, the what they had found in my phone. And then um, the caseworker got in touch with the uh, What did they the find? Father. Wait, raise your right hand for me, please. You saw me swear and affirm the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth. Yes, yeah. So help you God. Yes, yeah. All right. So state your name. Victoria Hernandez. What did they find in your phone? Uh, so they found that. So I had found out that my kid's father was locking my son, um, in the room, and I wasn't aware. Like I had, like so later on, they said that it was because like the autism doctor recommended that they lock the door at night. But I thought like they were just locking the, my son in the room like all day. And so that's what drug court found on my phone when they were going through our messages was me like getting mad at the dad about locking my son in the room. And so they called CPS for neglect. And then the dad got another CPS case because I believe the school called CPS for neglect as well. All right. Any objection to somebody from drug court zooming in? Objection. No objection. All right, just have a seat. Drug court is going to zoom in so we can get to the bottom of what's going on. And uh, Mr. Garhan, I'll let no, I'll let you all continue to talk. But this is Miss Garcia, so she's going to give us information. All right, we're back on the record in 2020 CR 8599 State versus Victoria Hernandez. All right, so we have Officer Garcia by Zoom. Any objections to her being by Zoom? Defense. No objection, Your Honor. All right, and the state has already stated that they do not have any objections. Officer Garcia, could you raise your right hand for me, please? Do you solemnly swear and affirm the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth will help you, God? Yes, Your Honor. All right, you can lower your hand. Uh, do you waive any confidentiality that Ms. Garcia has as it relates to uh, your time in felony drug court? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. I don't mind. All right. So you're you're giving up that right. Yes, Your Honor. All right. Any objection to her uh, testifying in the narrative? No, Your Honor. All right, Miss. I'm sorry, Officer Garcia. What we're trying to discover is whether or not she should be revoked, or whether or not I should send her to DDRF. What has transpired is there's been a mention of a child with special needs, because I was inclined to sentence her. Uh, to the Bear County Jail under 1244 to one year. Um, can you tell us how she was doing? What have been the issues with her in the drug court? And what would be your recommendation for her? Um, Judge, you know, Victoria was on my caseload the entire time that she was in felony drug court. 
Um, as you saw in the court summary, we did work with her extensively. Every time there was a violation, um, we used progressive sanctions. Um, we did have DDRF in abeyance, um, you know, back on um, 9-20-2023. Um, instead of that, we went ahead and gave her the chance to do Alpha Home, which she did complete. However, she went right back to her old criminal thinking, um, people, places, the basics that we teach in um, felony drug court. Um, we were we were working with her and um, we happened to do a phone search only because there was another phone search done on another participant kind of, you know, kind of intertwined the two. And that is the only reason why we found out is like it fell into our lap. Um, it wasn't something that we were looking for. And we had concerns again, because of her special needs child. Um, we do have another case against her in CPS. So the case, the CPS case, there is one pending for her, the father of her child. And we do also have one for herself. All right. Do you know, uh, with regards to the case for herself, what is that about? Because of what was found on her phone. Ah, so what was found on her phone has absolutely nothing to do with the child's biological father. It's actually both of them are involved. But again, he was the only one that the case had, the first CPS case is only on him. So when we found the information that included both of them, a CPS case was filed against her as well. So what was on her phone? Did it have to do with, I don't want to get into too much, but what was on her phone? Did it have to do with her as it relates to her and her child? Yes. What I mean, concerning for her to be around her child. Absolutely. Okay. And then considering her case that she's on as well. So um, with that being said, we have seen often that we work with the individuals and there wasn't really enough progress and we don't feel comfortable with um, one probation doesn't like to recommend revocation. Um, but we have seen in drug court that a lot of our um, participants are getting credit for time served. So we didn't want her to just, um, you know, get a JSAT and be done because then there's no problems that are fixed. And then we have the concern for the son um, because she will be able to go back and just be around him. That was that was what she was trying to do while she was on my caseload. Um, mm -hmm. So that is very concerning. Um, if I could recommend revocation um, without the JSAT, I would. And I would like to. That's what I would like for to happen. All right. Uh, do you have any questions? I do, Judge. All right. Officer Garcia? Yes, sir. Throughout her time throughout felony drug court, she tested negative on multiple occasions, correct? Um, there, she did. However, she also tested positive. How long ago was that? Um, let me check. Drug test. Well, she did have a no show. So to us, that was April the 17th. That, um, is considered a positive in felony drug court. Um, let's see her last positive would have been September of last year 2023 and, yes and again she did go to treatment during that time frame before we just got her back reporting in person that's all i have for you thank you mm -hmm. all right and uh officer garcia you all are not willing to accept her back is that correct no judge we we've worked so much with a uh, Miss Victoria, um, and it just seems like um, we're just hit. We hit a wall at this point. All right, thank you so much for zooming in on such short notice. I appreciate it. Yes, Judge, you have a good rest of your afternoon. Okay. All right. Bye bye. Bye bye. All right. So with her. Um,
it's going to be revocation. Are you still insisting that what, what was in your phone was not related to you? I wasn't aware the second time around that I that a CPS case was put on me. I've been in jail. No, 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 no. My question is, is are you is. still saying that what was on your phone regarding your child is unrelated to you? No, no. Okay. Judge, um, in lieu of that, we're, we're asking for the minimum time in law. Apparently she has 158 days in custody over the past three, four years. And I would argue that, you know, she has done several things right. She's also done several things wrong, but she there was several things. She did participate in the felony drug program and did a lot of good things. So we, we want the court to uh, reflect on that. All right. This is what the court is going to do. Court is going to revoke you. Let me see. Where is the trial court certification? Handed it to the court. I do have it here. The court is going to revoke you. The court is going to find you guilty. The court will give you credit for any time served. Uh, the court will give you credit if you successfully complete an inpatient treatment, because I see there was some inpatient treatment, maybe through alcohol. Yeah. If you successfully completed that, the court will give you credit for that. And the court is going to sentence you to two years in the state jail facility. I'll recommend the therapeutic community. Uh, I can't force them to place you in there, but if you uh, request it, they will consider it. If you don't request it, they will not consider it at all. And I'll also request uh, mental health while she's at the state jail facility. I'm going to show you what's entitled trial court certification of defendant's rights to appeal. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes. Sir. All right. Do you have a limited right to appeal? That right to appeal is as it relates to the allegations in the motion, not the fact that you were on deferred adjudication. Because this is a felony conviction, you're not allowed to own or possess any weapons or ammunition. If you have a question over what a weapon or ammunition is, you need to speak to an attorney. Do you understand? Yes, Your Honor. All right, we can go off the record. You're going to have to get your life in order. If you don't, your life is going to continue to spiral out of control. Felony Drug Court is a good program. They work with you for two years trying to help you, and you still just want to do whatever you've been doing, which is not good for your son. I always tell people you're an adult. Your son is not an adult. Your son is 100% percent dependent on you upon you and you're just doing foolish things good luck to you all right are we ready on joseph smith just one second Joseph. sure okay sure all right thank you